recording progress. Okay, so we have the chromatography method. Uh, here you have what an LC, a GC, kasama din dito yung MS. Okay, because MS is just what a detection method. Okay, so if you watch the video on the MS, usually that's where the uh what we call detection of the separate uh, compounds in a given sample is uh, analyzed. Okay, so chromatography is only separation method. Now the other one is spectroscopy. So what is spectroscopy all about? Light matter interaction. Okay, so Kung sa chromatography, pwede ka maging LC or GC specialist. Sa spectroscopy, ang dami. Okay? Now, in my experience sa chromatography, we could say uh, I have used LC and GC uh, at various times of my life. Sa spectroscopy, I'm limited with what? The UVBs, fluorescence, ano pa ba? vibrational spectroscopy. So yan yung uh, experience ko sa spectroscopy. And I'm proud to say I have papers in chromatography, I have papers in spectroscopy, and I also have papers in electrochemistry or yung tinatawag natin electroanalytical method. And do you know where I did those papers? Hulaan nyo. Anyone? Okay. You feel those banyos. Okay. Uh, I, I'm an, an electrochemistry guy before I came here to the U.S. But you might ask me, what changed? Because when I went to university at Buffalo, the one who is an electrochemistry guy is an 85-year-old guy. And the first question that you ask me is, do you know this certain person who is a Filipina who was uh, his PhD student in 1976? 1976, the year that I was born. So they had no funding. He, uh, he had no funding, so I have to change my specialization. So yung ginagawa kong electrochemistry or electroanalytical technique yan ay yung tinatawag na voltammetric method. So we have trial potential and then we measure the current. The current is synonymous to the amount of the analyte. Ano sa tingin yung analyte na inanalyze namin? Anyone? Kung may access kayo sa library, I think the thesis of my students are still there. Ano nga? Anong ions? Anong ions yun? And, and, and just to give you an idea doon sa see that? Do you see a periodic table that is uh, made up of photos of students or of people? Nakikita nyo ba? So, yan, kita nyo yung seal ng UPLB. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 students from 2003 to 2005. I'm so proud of them because most of them are successful at this time. I'm so proud of them kasi sila yung tinatawag na yung latak ng IC during that time. Okay? But each of them they performed or fabricated an, uh, a sensor na merong copper wire, 
ilalagyan lang namin ng tinatawag na I think you can look at some of the title of the papers that comes out. So here's my web page. Okay, so as of now, I have 103 papers. So ito yung nag start pa lang kami. So tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo isang paper namin. Anyone has an idea what is the Periplanata America? Amer Americana? Doon sa mga Alchem? Ano yung Periplanata? Uh, Periplanata America? Americana? Anyone? Ano yan? Anong species yan? Sige nga. Di ba may Alchem sa inyo? <laughs> it's an ipis. Yep. And I think I have a copy of it. Ay, wala, wala yung copy. Nakakainis. So look at me. So this was what? 12 years ago. And this was during the pandemic. Huh? Cock. <laughs> Hoy, bawal yan. Ikaw eh. Ipis na lang, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Talagang in emphasize eh. <laughs> so, this is a cockroach. And then you see here, mercury, feather, and then karajinan. Okay. And then you could see here. Lectin, feather throat. Okay. Uh, Coffin troll. So, so, so you could see. <laughs> you, you could see the, the thing. So, meron kami yung, uh, uh, you know, the essential oils that most students do in Camp 40. Okay. Hindi ko alam kung nag, sa 4344 nag, nag distill nag, nag kayo ng essential oil doon. But, but, but that's what we call the output that I have in. Uh, I'm, I'm just sharing to you yung tinatawag natin out. Good. Now, when you take the grad graduate school or uh, grad course dyan sa UPLB, there are three courses, each one in chromatography, spectroscopy, and electrochemistry that is being taught. If I'm not mistaken, this is 232, this is 231, and this is 233. Hindi lang ako sure dito. Pero ako sure dito. Why? Kasi ako nagtuturo niya ngayon eh. Okay, and that's the, 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 the whole thing that is called 230, research techniques in chemistry. Now, the, the good thing about electrochemistry is we could say it's a billion dollar industry. Do you have any idea what that device that is billion dollar industry that is due to electrochemistry? Maybe your parents have it. I have it. Ano sa tingin nyo? Ano yun? Dialysis? Battery? Battery is electrochemistry. But the one that we're talking about is electroanalytical method. So you use it to analyze something. Malapit sa dialysis. Okay. Somebody hit it. The sugar meter. What do you think is the technique behind the sugar meter? Ano specifically sa electrochemistry yung sugar meter? Anyone? Anong metri? Kasi lahat dito ang metri eh. Voltametry. Potentiometry. Ano pa? Kolumetri. Ano pang metri? Amperometri. So if you're going to do, this is what? Voltage, potential, coulomb, ampere. So alin dyan yung base doon sa glucose meter? Anyone?
binibigay na nga sa inyo. Al pipiliin niyo lang dito sa apat alin yung ano. So alin dito ang principle behind sa sugar meter? It's a billion dollar industry because every diabetic person needs it. And they're becoming high tech. Ang alam natin yung piniprick pa natin but right now pwedeng i-ano mo lang sa skin mo kaya na nilang mag-read. So what do you think? If I ask this in a quiz, true or false, the principle behind sugar meter is voltammetry. The principle behind sugar, uh, sugar meter is potentiometry. So yeah, lahat yan, lalabas yan. Okay? Anyone guess? You can ask help of Mr. Google. So, we, we can go right away doon sa mga product. So, potentiometry, anong meron dyan? Usually, yung pH meter, tsaka yung tinatawag nating ISE. So, ano yung ISE? Hindi kayo nanood ng ano, no? <laughs> oh, hindi kayo nanood ng recorded lecture, eh. So, ISE is ion selective electrode. So, uh, yesterday, my students did analysis of fluoride using a fluoride ion selective electrode okay mega uh, ma input ko yung ano doon yung tawag dito yung video but at least makita niyo how yung instrument lang ha hindi yung mga estudyante Windang din kami dito at this time because it's the end of the semester. So we have only until next week to finish everything. So you see this? Kita nyo? May nakikita kayong video class na parang pH meter. So that yes, is but, yes, but. Okay, that is uh, an ion selective electrode. So ginawa namin dito. So, kinat na namin. So, we're, we're, we're measuring the standard uh, calibration curve.
So uh, this was uh, uh, the video that we have before during the pandemic. So I have to do the experiment. Okay, I asked some of my own research uh, members to help me in uh, doing that stuff. So I don't know how you're going to do it in your 137.1. Diba yun yung kasunod yung ano, course? Pag pumasa kayo. <laughs> so uh, just to give you an idea, so the sugar meter is based on amperometry. Okay, pag, pag, yeah, may malaking pag. Well, definitely we're not going to meet again unless you take a graduate course. Okay? Yun lang yung assurance ko sa inyo. Okay? <laughs> Kaya nga yung uh, inanda kong kanta yung parang ano. I don't know if you look at the lyrics. I don't know where we'll we, we meet again. Some, uh, don't know when, don't know where. <laughs> Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin electroanalytical method. Of, of all the things, I think this is what? The main advantage of this is the portability. Pwede mo siyang gawing remote or on-site. Okay? In, in fact, Wala, binalik ko na sa office ko yung aking ano eh. Meron akong electrochemistry na ano, nadadala ko kung saan ko gusto. Meron din akong in-house. Okay? I was supposed to bring it to the Philippines and then I found out at the night of our travel, wala yung kable. <laughs> Sabi ko hindi ko na ano yun. Because I was supposed to work in Marinduque to analyze some of the metal ions that they have there. Okay? So, karamihan ng ano nito, metals. Okay? So, they have their own uh, what we call uses. Now, the, the thing that I know, maybe in our last uh, meeting, is we're going to look at the overall. So, parang pag tinanong kayo, pag nag kayo ng lab, bibigyan kayo ni BBM ng uh, billions, ano yung mga instrument na bibilhin mo? You have to justify. Usually, ganun naman dyan eh. You have to justify. Right? Pero kapag maharli ka pa, they don't need to justify. You just have to say it's urgent. Kasi, kailangan namin manakawal ng pera. <laughs> okay? So, e e every method that you use has some justification. And every method has what we call its own uh, advantage and disadvantages. So overall, uh, what I want you to do is according to own uh, application, you should have alternatives. Okay? So all of these are what we call instrument-based. Now, in a place like the Philippines, especially UPLB, ano main problem natin hanggang ngayon? Start with letter B. Oh, galing! Wala dyan. <laughs> Akala ko eh, hindi na sa, hindi, uh, solved na, pero nung unang punta ko dyan, 2018, first day na minute ko yung post, uh, host, uh, host, ano ko, uh, scientist eh, brown out. Right? Hindi ko brown out pa rin dyan. Minsan na lang. <laughs> now, ano pang ano? Uh, main problem kapag may instrument ka dyan. Aside from the questionable power supply, maintenance, Ewan ko, ba't ang daming ganito dyan? Uh, alin sa tingin yung method ang naapektuhan nito? Alin sa tatlo?
Okay? Usually ito. Kasi pwede yung instead yung matter, yung sample mo mag interact yung dash yung nag interact Dito, yung, yung UBBs nila bukas. Have you seen a UBBs instrument there, yung Spectronic 20? Usually sinasara dyan eh. Yung IR nila bukas, dyan, sinasara. Okay? At ano pang problema dyan? Yung, ito. Ano yung start with letter H? Humidity. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, merong bagong IR way back in 1997. Talaga yung isang professor dyan. Dapat dalawa daw yung aircon. Yung alternate yung pag on and off. Kasi kung hindi, matadali yung IR. Well, nadali din siya after some time. Okay? Uh, that's why uh, when you have the chance, let's say in the near future, you're going to the US, you're going to be amazed by the instrument that we have here. In fact, doon sa isang Pilipino, kaya ako na ano doon sa, sa your college. Alam niyo anong kulang sila? Tao. Tao na mag-operate doon sa instrument. That's why uh, he's always happy when I go there because I, I think the minimum instrument that I use is three at a time. Okay? Uh, once I put it in a cubet, I get the UVBs, I get the fluorescence, I get the CD. You're familiar with CD? It's a big compact disc. And if it's a big CD, Uso pa ba compact disc? Okay. Sa divisoria. So CD is what we call Have you heard this method? Circular dichroism. So ano sa tingin niyo mini-measure ng CD? So the CD would measure yung tinatawag nating conformation. Uh, are you familiar with biochem? Ano ba yun mga primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure? Yung merong involved na alpha helix tsaka beta sheet. Because what I'm trying to analyze there is the interaction of protein with some nanomaterials. So I analyze the UVBs, the fluorescent, the spectrofluorescence or the fluorescence, and then the CD, and then either the IR or the Raman. So each of them would tell a different story. Whenever you do a research, parang ano lang yan eh, nagkikwento ka lang. So, ano nangyayari? Okay. So, anong info ang makukuha mo sa UVBs? So, you will see there if you put your protein sample or mix it with other stuff, is the absorbance is still as high as the one that it is just what we call the protein solution. So, pag bumaba, bakit? Anong kwento ang, anong rason yung ibibigay mo? Okay? So usually, in the UVBs, we look at what? Kapag uh, protein, ano yung tinitingnan mong amino acid? Anong kind of amino acid? May 160 na ba kayo dito? Do you have a 160 or 160.1 or 161 ata? 161 is the biochem, right? Pinalimutan na. Sino teacher nyo? Kayo. Kakalimutan na lahat pagkatapos ng klase. Secret. Ano yung secret? Pampahit sa kilikili? <laughs> Meron pa ba yun? 
yung brand ng deodorant. <laughs> no, there's a brand of deodorant na ang tawag ay secret. Kaya pag may humiri sa amin ng secret, ano yan? Pampahit sa kilik-kilik? <laughs> Hindi ko alam anong kulay kasi wala kami dito nun. Hanggang aks lang ako dito. Okay. So, uh, when you analyze for the protein, ano amino acid yung tinitingnan mo? Sa UV base. Sa absorbance niya. You look at yung tinatawag nating aromatic amino acid, right? So, ano yung aromatic uh, amino acid? Usually, you have what? This one. And this one, ano to? Pe. <laughs> so, tire. So, this is your phenylalanine. And this is your tyrosine. So, alam mo ba yung, uh, kilala nyo ba yung 10 amino acids? Essential amino acid? It goes by the name of what? private team hall or private mat hill kilala niyo yun alam niyo to <laughs> okay so so those are the what we call the, the names of uh, uh, the letters of the amino acids that are what we call essential we call it essential because you have to supply it so ano yung tinitingnan ko dito why do I use those different spectroscopic methods? So UVBs will tell me about the absorbance. Now, if you have an aromatic amino acid, usually they fluoresce. So there's another story that I can get from the fluorescence. And then the CD would tell me, ano yung nangyayari dun sa conformation? Usually, kailan ka nagbe-beta sheet kapag meron kang denaturization? Okay, now the IR and Raman tells me about what? Changes in the functional group. So I, I put a scene or a story out of that, what we call results. And each of them should agree with one another. Ganun yung paggawa ng research using a instrument based method. Y yun yung specialty ko dito. So I would say, uh, I survive because of the instrument. So imagine if you're doing this in the Philippines, do you think you can survive doing research without instrument? I remember one professor before when we are in the undergrad. If you think you can do research without reagent, think again. If you think uh, you can graduate without instrument, think again. So what do you think? So ang sagot namin, I'll think again. <laughs> we still want to be uh, my advice. <laughs> oh, mom, I'll just think again. <laughs> so I'm just telling this to you because most of you, or we could say all of you, need what? That course that has this one, right? Either this or this. And we always go to analytical because what? Kung ano yung result, interpret lang namin. Compare if you go to organic chemistry. So ano yung mga thesis sa organic chemistry? You isolate something, identify it, it still use instrument. Okay? So if your thesis is analytical, so mag-analyze ka lang ng ano, heavy metal sa kung anong lawa diyan sa San Pablo. Ang um, number one, ano doon, yung Laguna de Bay. Okay? Isang professor, yun yung ginagawa niya. So that's what you do as a thesis. Okay? So I'm, I'm telling you this to, to, to prepare you doon sa stage na yun because it's going to be useful. Yung isang atang alumni natin, nagtatag siya ng, uh, uh, after being a faculty, then nagtatag siya ng sarili niyang lab. And companies are paying uh, to do analysis in his lab. Lumago yung, ano niya, lab niya. 
Kasi meron ka ng mga low low na kailangan mo ano diyan, yung solid waste law, yung clean air act, ang dami na. And each company has their own uh, what we call na uh, uh, way to to do analysis. So yung, yung ibang mga uh, plants diyan, they have to make sure that they are compliant to this thing. And usually they use this Uh, analytical service lab as we call it that's why uh, what, what i want maybe one of the question na i ask you say is a final exam uh, na, na essay okay kung meron kang ibibigay na budget ni BBM ano yung mga instrument na bibilhin mo at bakit okay so so that's just the pep talk that i have about the instrumental analysis okay And I would say the knowledge that I have before I came here is very limited as to the knowledge that I have now after experiencing using these different methods. And I would say I saw some of our own alumni who went here who were just amazed nung makita nila yung instrument. Parang ang sabi namin, paanga-anga kami noon kasi it's all on theory. Okay? <laughs> it's all in theory to the point na unang dating namin na, ano to? Hindi namin alam, copy maker pala. <laughs> kasi yung kape natin, instant lang, di ba? Ilalagay mo lang. <laughs> e dito parang, ibrubrub pa. <laughs> So, hindi namin alam paano i-operate yung copy maker doon sa bahay na inuubahan namin. Oh, ngayon, may air fryer. May air fryer ako dito. Di ba? So, ganun ka ano yung technology dito. And I hope uh, nag improve naman dyan. But I think as long as you have problem with the infrastructure, na hindi ka maka, makakuha ng continuous power supply, I think it will always be a problem. Sad to say. Okay? So, punta na tayo doon sa problem set. The last one. Wala tayong problem set sa 7 and 8. It's, it's just a very what we call close uh, short method. Uh, Uh, seven and eight is if ever may end up kayo doon sa Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. That's a radioactive uh, analysis, radiometric analysis. So here, so why do we use glass membrane electrode? Have higher affinity for protons than the other metal ions. Ano meron yung glass membrane? Ano yung composition ng glass? Usually you have what? Borosilicate? Right? Now, usually when they, when they construct this glass membrane, ito yung, uh, you're familiar with pH meter, right? Yung totoo. Kahit yung pang-aquarium na pH meter man lang. Okay? So usually yung glass membrane doon, Be very careful kayo doon kasi <laughs> may ba <laughs> muntik na akong matalsik sa grad school dito kasi muntik ko na upakan yung isang bumbay na walang alam. <laughs> so, so ginagawa niya yung pH meter. So binababad mo yan sa solution. So sometimes you have this what we call uh, magnetic bar. Eh, itong bumbay na to, na pag tinignan mo yung CVs, napaka-impressive. Binababa niya maigi yung uh, drawing natin para makita niya yung ibig kong sabihin. So usually ganun yung pH meter na yun eh. Mer meron siyang thin membrane dito na ganun. So itong bumbay na to, walang common sense. Tinatama niya doon. Tasa sabihin niya, Dr. Alka, the proof is broken again. Tapos sabi na, 
Sino mo nga ang ginagawa niyan? Para gusto ko siyang sapakin nun. <laughs> Nagka-PhD rin siya. Ahead siya sa akin. Yan yung uh, sinu niya, yung advisor namin. Natatawa nga ako kasi he's taking adv- he took advantage of all the law. So yung makita namin, pag malapit sa amin, maglalakad ng ika-ika para pag malayo na diretso yung lakad niya. Okay. That's why I hate Indians. I don't want to be racist, but most of them are what we call sneaky. Okay? Yung parang ayaw nilang masapawan sila. I have classmate in grad school na, anong school mo? Parang feeling niya siya yung highest. So, hindi namin. Mga kami mga pinag- we don't show our score. Okay? Yung parang believe na believe sila sa sarili to the point na yung isang postdoc na <laughs> lagi nanonood ng cricket, tinatanggal lang ko ng internet line. Okay, so that's the thing that you have to deal with uh, when you go here in grad school. Okay, people of other culture who have different uh, what we call the upbringing. Okay, so uh, yun yung glass membrane. So we go back to the question. So usually itong glass membrane na to, meron siyang tinatawag nating uh, either lithium ion or sodium ion. Okay? So uh, usually meron yan kapag kinoconstruct mo yung glass membrane. Now, pag tininan mo yung proton, proton is what? It's just the H plus, right? Pag kininan mo yung proton, y- yung size niya, ano siya? Mas malaki or mas maliit dyan sa mga ion na yan? So if you're going to look at the periodic table, nasa taas siya, di ba? So as you go from top to bottom, the size uh, increases. So since mas maliit yung proton or your H+, plus, so pwede siyang makapasok. It can easily fit doon sa glass membrane. Okay? Kapag ni-replace mo yung pre-existing ions na meron siya. Now, usually yung other metal ions, ano sa tingin nyo? Mas malaki kaysa sa lithium tsaka doon sa sodium. So, hindi siya agad makakapasok doon sa glass membrane. Unless baguhin mo yung structural rearrangement, uh, nagkaroon ng structural rearrangement doon sa membrane. So, yan yung reason. Bakit mataas yung affinity ng glass membrane doon sa proton. Usually, ito yung ginagamit nila sa pH meter. So, ang ano ko lang sa inyo, that, that, that glass membrane there, it's so thin. Sometimes, kahit hindi nga tamaan, yung, yung, ano lang, yung force lang ng pag-ikot, pwede siyang mabasa. <laughs> I have the worst experience yung postdoc ko at yung PhD student ko nung ako na yung postdoc. One's an Indian and the other one's an Iranian. <laughs> Ang magandang experience ko lang yung unang postdoc na binigay sa akin, Koreano, we are able to publish a paper. Yung isang po, uh, uh, ahead sa akin na PhD na Indian, oh, Uh, when we publish a paper, I will be the leading author. Hindi naman na sabi. Kasi dito, publications, publications, and publications is the name of the game. Now, we go with ISE. Why are the ISE usually selective but really specific for the analyte of interest? Okay? So, we go back again doon sa number one. So, usually, yung ISE na yan, meron silang tinatawag na yung membranes na nilalagay doon. Okay, for, for the pH meter is a glass membrane. But for the other ISE, they have their own what we call membrane. But they are not designed to respond okay, only to the exact chemical structure of a given ion. So the response is based more on what? The size of the ion and the magnitude of the charge. So, Depende doon sa size, tsaka doon sa 
charge nung ion mo. So, if you have a glass membrane, it will respond to a positively charge tsaka doon sa lithium or sodium. Now, if you have a low, uh, a smaller one, magre-respond siya doon. Okay? So, for any given ion, kasi yung ISE, okay, it is for a specific ion. I, kaya natin ion selective. Yung response niya is based more on the size and the magnitude. So, for any given ion, there will exist multiple other ions with similar chemical functionality due both to the magnitude of the charge and to the relative size of the ion. Kaya hindi siya, ano, tinatawag natin specific. It's more on selective. Yung S doon, ion selective, not ion specific. Okay? Now, name and briefly describe three common uh, reference electrodes. So, if you watch the video, specifically, dalawa lang yung minention doon eh. Okay? Pero yung isa, uh, pwede natin i-consider na reference electrode. So, one of the common uh, uh, reference electrode yung tinatawag natin saturated calomel electrode. So, yung saturated calomel electrode, okay, uh, this is a conducting wire which is in contact with a mixture of mercury ion mixed with calomel. So, yung calomel is mercury chloride. Okay? So, this is a paste conducting wire which is in contact with a Mixture, uh, this space is enclosed in a tube with a porous junction, okay? And, and this tube is immersed in another tube containing a saturated solution of KCl. So yung second tube, meron siyang porous junction that would be in contact with the solution of interest. Okay? Now yung isa pa na tinatawag nating uh, reference electrode ay yung Silver, silver chloride. So the silver, silver chloride electron, this is the, uh, another common reference electrode. So meron kang silver wire dyan na coated with solid silver chloride. Okay, so insoluble yung silver chloride. So ini-immerse mo tong wire na to in a solution that is uh, KCl, 3.5 molar of KCl, and you place it in a tube in a porous uh, junction that is in contact with the solution of interest. So usually you can use a pH meter with a silver uh, silver chloride reference electrode to measure yung uh, formation ng silver chloride kapag nag-ano na, nag ka tinatawag nating precipitation titration. You have a silver ion that you add that contains a, a solution containing iodide and chloride. So then, uh, with the pH meter and silver, silver chloride, kukunin mo yung potential nila. Now, what is the third one? Now, the third one is the one that you use when you measure the electrode, yung sa battery, yung reduction potential. And what is SHE? Ano yung SHE? Sige nga, recall natin yung gen chem nyo. Okay, SHE is the standard hydrogen electrode. So yan yung uh, pangatlong reference electrode. Okay, so here, what do you have? You have a platinum that serves as your uh, electrode immersed in a one molar uh, H plus solution over which you bubbled one atmosphere of hydrogen gas. So, ginagamit yan to measure yung reduction potential. So, it always have, ano yung reduction potential ng SHE? Anyone? Hmm? 
Sorry. Na paano ako sa sagot niya eh? <coughs> Zero. Kaya balik ka rin mo man yung reaction. <coughs> It's also zero. <coughs> Maano ako dito kay Sean eh. <coughs> eh? The next one. <coughs> so what is the source of the alkaline error in pH measurement with a glass electrode? Ano sa tingin nyo? Anong ion ang nagkakurse ng alkaline error? Anyone? So remember, this is still glass membrane, di ba? So ano ba yung mga basic solution? Sige nga. Yeah, ano? OH, yeah. Pero usually, saan yung source ng OH? So you have the sodium ion from sodium hydroxide and what's the other OH? Potassium. So usually, yung source ng alkaline error sa pH measurement ay yung glass electrode arising from uh, the exchange of singly charged ions. Ay, ano yung ba yung singly charge? You have sodium ion potassium ion. So, nagkakaroon ng interaction ng singly charged ion doon sa surface ng glass membrane with the protons from the water. So, kapag matagal siyang nakadip doon sa alkaline solution or basic solution, the potential of the system then responds to an alkaline ion activity as well as the hydrogen ion activity. Because if you're going to look at the measurement, it's just look at the potential difference ng concentration. Okay, you 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 ano nung potentiometry. Okay? This is net king, this is kind, okay? Differentiate between an electron of the second kind and the electrode of the third kind. Alam niyo ba yung close encounters of the first kind, close encounters of the second kind, close encounters of the third kind. Alam niyo yun? Alien. <laughs> Pero anong ibig sabihin nun? Alam niyo yun? Yeah, yung close encounters of the third kind. Ano yun? Movie yun. Pero anong ibig sabihin na first kind, second kind na encounter? Alam niyo yung pagkakaiba nun? Pag sinabi mong first kind, second kind, okay? First kind, ano? Nakita mo may flying object, unidentified. Para dyan, makikita mo yung dancing machine or yung mata, ma, uh, malakas na light. Sa so, kalamba ata yun. Okay? So yun yung uh, first kind. Tapos yung second kind, ano? Merong physical effect. Diba? Diba? Tapos yung third kind, ayun, ah, ano na yun? Interaction na. Di ba? <laughs> Now, meron din tayo ganyan sa electrode. Okay? So, we have this what we call uh, second kind and the third kind. So, when we say second kind, so yung metal electrode mo depends on uh, the potential doon sa metal electric mo, depends upon the activity of an anion that forms a precipitate with the electrode metallic ion. So that's the second kind. Now, yung third kind, 
you have a me metallic electrode whose potential depends on the activity of another kind of cation. Okay. So, for uh, the example, do you me mercury electrode then the response to the calcium ion activity? So, mercury electrode siya, pero nagre-respond siya doon si uh, calcium ion. Okay? Ang, ang ginagawa mo lang is lagyan mo lang siya ng EDTA na nagpo-form ng complex with mercury. Okay? Next one. Yung tinatawag nating current. Charging current versus paraday. Or yung paradigm. So kapag charging, what can you say about charging current? It arises from charging or discharging. of the electric double layer at the electrode solution interface. Now, yung father date naman, It arises from what? Redox reaction. So yun yung difference no? Dalawa. Okay? Next, ano oras na ba? I would see on time. Yes, may 30 minutes pa. So explain what is being done in anodic stripping uh, voltammetry. So why is stripping the most sensitive voltammetric uh, techniques? Yan yung ginagawa namin noon. Yung ini-strip namin yung metal ion. Okay? So inano namin kung il, gaano kadami yung nag-buy na metal ion tapos ilalagyan namin ng potential. So ini-strip namin yun. Okay? So the ones that are not stripping uh, in ASB, as we call it, you reduce the analyte. So what do we Reduce the analyte. Ano yon? Paano yung reaction dun? Reducing the analyte. So if you have a metal, ano yan? Plus or just a metal? So usually you have a metal plus plus an electron giving you a metal. So ganun yung ano namin. We use lead. So kapag ni-reduce namin yun, magiging metallic lead siya. Okay? So <clears throat> the analyte is reduced and then concentrated at the working electrode at a controlled potential for a constant time. So usually we use what we call the modifier. So the modifier that we have contains functional group na magbabine sa metal. So feather. Anong active ingredient sa feather ang pwede magbabine sa metal? Anyone? Kasi meron kaming carbon paste Okay, tapos ilalagay namin yung aming tinatawag na modifier. So what we do is just waste material. Meron kaming feather throat, meron kaming banana throat, meron kaming pinya throat. Now what do you think they contain? Kasi sabi ko sa inyo, anodic stripping yung ginagawa kong research noon dyan. So for feather, what do you think they contain? Yeah, feather of birds. Ah, uh, sige, I, I search ko kung makikita ko yung aki aming ano paper about yan para bumili kayo.
So just to let you know, you yeah, know, yeah, banana tissue. So it's a feather throat, as one of you have said, you have this keratin. Okay, so we, we, we assume that, oh, pwede mo bang yan. Do, doon sa, ano, sa, sa essential oil, ano sa tingin nyo meron? Meron yan mga functional group. So yung functional group, pwede mag-attach yan doon sa tinatawag natin metal. So this one, oh, feather modified uh, voltammetry. Okay, uh, let's see if it's open. If it's open, then I just want to see it. Okay, continue reading. Okay, continue reading. Yung sarili kong paper, kailangan ako pang i-download. <laughs> ano ba naman yan? Ayaw akong pa ano. <laughs> no, I think I, I know where I can find that. Philippine Journal of Science. So, punta kayo dyan sa Philippine Journal of Science, tapos mag-search kayo. Search nyo si Mojica. So, ito yung latest dyan. I hope lumabas. So, that's the mine. This is mine. Mine, yeah, here. Ito. Ayan. Kita nyo? Look. So, so you see, so th this is one of the first paper that I have when I'm still there. So way back what? 2005. So a feather throat sensor for detecting lead ion. So ang estudyante ko dyan yan, si Mr. Sino. And they won uh, the National Invention Contest to, to twice na nanalo yung mga student ko. Mag-tripit pa sana kami eh. Parang Chicago Bulls pero umalis na ako. 2003, 2004, and then 2005, I have to leave. Okay? So, uh, we use this as a modifier. So, doon sa ASB na nangyari, okay? So, nire-reduce niya yung analyte, which is on our part, is a metal. So, yung working electrode namin yan. Y yan, yan yung modifier. So, meron kaming copper wire, okay? Tapos, meron kaming straw, I mean, yung sa tetrapak. Tapos, may small amount doon na carbon paste na tawag namin. Carbon powder lang yon, na hinalo namin ng uh, nudule oil and then hinalo namin yung modifier namin doon. Tapos yun yung nagsiserve as our working electrode. Yung reference electrode namin is uh, silver-silver chloride. Yung auxiliary electrode namin ay yung tinatawag nating platinum wire. Okay? So what happened during this uh, ASB, ang nangyayari, Iraramp namin yung potential. Okay? So when the potential is wrapped in a positive direction to reoxidize the analyte during which we measure the current. So kung gano'ng kadami yung metal doon, gano'n din kataas yung current. Okay? So ang ano nga una namin ginagawa niyan is a cyclic voltammetry. So tinitingnan namin kung ano yung isura niya na gano'n. So minsan, yung isa, lalabas yung ano, tapos yung pababa, usually dapat may ganun din eh. Kaso wala na. Ganun na. Okay? So, the height of the oxidation wave is proportional to the original concentration of the analyte. And the stripping analysis, or stripping is the most sensitive uh, voltammetric technique because the analyte is concentrated from a dilute solution. And the longer the period of the concentration, the more sensitive is the analysis. Okay? 
And I think, ano yung isa pang question before tayo magkadaon ng calculation? So list the advantages and disadvantages of the dropping mercury electrode compared with platinum or carbon microelectrode. So may, start tayo. Disadvantages, ano? Kapag nag-ano ka ng dropping mercury electrode. Usually, environment, di ba? Because you have a toxic mercury. Okay? Now, if you're going to look at what we call the advantages of the dropping mercury electrode, this is a platinum or a carbon microelectrode. One is we could say it has a high hydrogen over voltage. Okay, so maybe we list down to dito para kung lumabas sa quiz, alam nyo. So high a hydrogen over voltage. Two, continuously uh, what we call produce fresh metal surface. Ang tawag dyan is ano, hanging drop electrode, hanging uh, mercury drop electrode, HMDE. Okay? So every drop merong fresh surface. And then we could say it's reproducibility. It has a reproducible overage current. Okay, that are immediately realized at any given uh, applied potential. Now, yung advantage niya, aside from the environmental factors, is yung poor anodic uh, potential range. Tapos na masyado mataas yung uh, residual or large residual current. And it's also an inconvenient. Kasi atayin mo siya mag-drop eh. Hindi siya automatic. Okay? And it's tendency to yield, uh, yield current maxima. So it's yield the current maxima. And I think they paste this out already because of environmental stuff. So let's go to the problem solving. Tandaan niyo pa to? Jenkem 1. Sabi nila yung board exam parang Jenkem lang, di ba? Pwera lang orgo. <laughs> Kaya kapag hindi na tayo ano, uh, we're done with the semester, uh, I hope you still what we call uh, connect. I mean, I give you access. Open naman sa YouTube yung yung ano yung mga video na pinupost ko for Jen Kim. And as I promise, gagawin natin sa analytical para at least sigurado tayo sa uh, na prepared kayo. Kasi parang a pressure ako. The best performing school in chemistry licensure exam 2022. O, di ba? You think ang pinakamahirap daw is analytical. So let's try to look at the problem. So how do we solve this? How do we calculate the potential for silver ion with the concentration of that to become silver. So ano to? Anong redox dito? It, it, it's the reduction or the oxidation reaction? So we can put there E. And then whatever is the reduction potential, which in this case is what? 0. 0.799. Tapos isubtract mo siya ng 0. 0.0592. So ano yung N? Ilang electrons yun? So this is silver ion. Anong M? 
This is the Nernst equation. Is it true? Silver ion nga eh. Toinks. <laughs> so that's one. And then we have what? Log of saan yung silver ion? Sa numerator or denominator? Hmm. So remember the reaction is silver ion and then a concentration of 0 0.0152 and the other one is silver. So this is what? This is uh, the cathode. You see, reduction reaction to eh? So if that's the cathode, so it should be NASA reactant. So, so one, uh, we have one here and this one is equals to the silver ion concentration. So if we're going to replace it, so 0.799 minus 0 0.0592, one, we have log one over 0 0.0152, right? Or you can use the other version, any other version, 799 minus 0 0.0257, one, and instead of that, you use LN, diba? Tandaan niyo pa to? Anong equation to? You still remember what equation is this? Walter Nern's equation. So what's the answer here? Point six nine one. So let's get to the next one. Fe and Fe two plus in the platinum. So how do we do it? Which is the reactant and which is the product here? Kasi kailangan yan sa pag set up eh. So we have to look at Fe3 plus here. So you should have a reduction potential table here. So you will know what's the reduction potential. So I'll, I'll give it to you. So E is equals to 0 0.771 and then minus. Ano to? Ilang uh, N to? So look at the system. Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. So, ilang electron? Anyone? It's also one. So, you put the one and then log. So, ilalagay natin sa taas yung point zero kasi yun yung huli eh. And dito sa baba yung 2.35 times 10 to the negative 4. So, so if you're going to look at the given here. Yeah. So ito yung reactant. Ito yung product. And then you calculate. Easy peasy, right? That's a good. Ba? Bilis? May old notes ka, no? <laughs> you got it? Pass? Nadyan pa ba kayo ang aking 21 students who is very loyal? And last but not the least, so you have a silver bromide saturated and a bromide. So we could say the bromide is what? The product. So if we're going to put it there. So ito yung reduction potential. That was 0 0.0592 again. Since you have bromide and silver, they just have positive one or negative one. So isa lang. 
So you have their log of 0.1 over 1. And what do you get? Galing. Galing ni Irvin. 0.19 or 1.32. That's it. Tanong. Tanong. Kasha and Texas today. 